Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So, in case you're not familiar, the Met Gala is an annual fundraising event held to benefit the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute, which is in New York City. Most people believe this is the world's most prestigious fashion event, and yes, invitations are highly sought after. This gala is held annually on the first Monday of May. Our Frank. In a new 8K filing, Tesla has announced the date for its annual shareholder meeting, set to be August 4th in Austin, Texas. They also say the corresponding record date for determining the stockholders of the company entitled to notice of and to vote at the annual meeting will be June 6th, 2022. The record date is effectively the cutoff date for determining who is a Tesla shareholder and thus who will be able to vote and attend the meeting. And why this timing? Because it's state law. Most states, including Texas, provide that the record date must set a maximum 60 days and a minimum of 10 days prior to the annual shareholder meeting. So what does this mean? Well, in 2021, Tesla actually filed its proxy on August 13th, four days after the record date, which was August 9th. So if Tesla follows those same timelines, then we can expect the actual proxy statement to come on June 10th, four days after the record date, which is June 6th. So most likely on June 10th, we'll learn how many extra shares Tesla wants to issue, which will effectively set the cap or the high end for the stock split ratio. Then on August 4th, shareholders will vote. Nothing has been announced yet, but if you are a shareholder as of the record date, most likely you will be able to attend the event in person. I can't imagine Tesla having the Giga Austin rodeo event and then going back to doing a virtual event for the shareholder meeting, but time will tell. So more than likely a Tesla stock split coming sometime later this fall. Now, if we go back to 2020, just to take a look at what happened from the time the stock split was announced on August 11th to the first day of trading after the split, August 31st, so about 20 days, Tesla stock was up 78%. Now, of course, it's always important to compare that to what the broader market is doing over that same time. So looking at the NASDAQ over the same 20 day period, it was up 8% while once again, Tesla was up 80%. So past performance guarantees nothing. However, it's interesting data. I wanted to share this quick anecdote with you. I think it's easy to be online and read all of the negativity around Tesla service and start to develop this mindset that Tesla service really is struggling. And yes, they have issues and they have a long way to go. However, let's not forget, there are still many anecdotes of excellent customer experiences dealing with Tesla mobile service and the repair center. So it's definitely a mixed bag, but let's not forget about all of the good. And this right here is a low key, super bullish story for many different reasons. What we have here is Tesla writing a letter to the local government authorities in Shanghai, thanking them for the assistance Tesla received from the local government in reopening Giga Shanghai. Shanghai authorities helped Tesla transport over 6,000 workers and carry out necessary disinfection work to reopen Giga Shanghai last month during the lockdown. As we know, Tesla reopened the factory on April 19th after a 22 day stoppage in which Tesla may have lost around 50,000 units of production. However, as Elon said on the Q1 call, he's still very confident that Giga Shanghai can pull something off, possibly maintaining Q1 levels of production into Q2. Tesla said in the letter, they fought for three consecutive days working around the clock nonstop to guarantee our company's workers could return to the factory. This shows a healthy relationship between the local Shanghai government and Tesla, which is great, but it also highlights the importance of Tesla to the local Shanghai economy but there's more. The letter also outlined how Tesla planned to further expand its plant in Shanghai. The company will build a new plant on nearby land in the same area, which is poised to add an annual capacity of 450,000 cars, including both Model 3 and Model Ys, 
making it the world's largest vehicle export hub. So this new factory near Giga Shanghai was reported on a few months ago, so this news really is more of a confirmation. However, expanding the export capacity of Giga Shanghai is a huge deal as this will allow Tesla to deliver more vehicles to new markets, and we all know that Tesla grows organically from butts in seats, and once even a few thousand Teslas infiltrate a new area, the demand is going to grow quickly. So we have Tesla expanding the current footprint at Giga Shanghai to around 1 million units per year, plus this additional new factory with an additional 450,000 units of capacity, putting the Giga Shanghai area around 1.5 million units once the new factory is complete. So not only does this mean new demand in new markets, but also you have to remember Tesla is making around $10,000 in profit per vehicle sold. So another 450,000 units of capacity times $10,000 per vehicle is an additional $4.5 billion in profit for Tesla once the new factory is up and running. And this would put Tesla directly in line with some of the big players in terms of production from China. And we also have to remember that Tesla usually undersells with this capacity for factories. They talked about Shanghai being 500,000, now it's going to push a million. So all I'm saying is in a few years, I won't be surprised if Tesla is producing around 2 million vehicles per year just from the Shanghai area alone. Shifting back to the States, now tread lightly with this one. However, Trip Chowdhury said the Fremont factory is now running 10 to 20% above capacity. If Fremont is doing around 600,000 units a year, that would mean the factory could produce an additional 30,000 vehicles for quarter two to make up some of what was lost at Giga Shanghai. Now, this news item, I can already see it, is going to be painted in such a negative light by the media. However, I really don't think it has to be that way. So Tesla was offering bonuses to its sales and delivery staff based on bigger store-based and region-based quarterly delivery quotas. So if these quotas were met, then employees would get a 25% bonus on top of their salaries issued in their choice of cash or stock options on a vesting schedule. So now Tesla is canceling those delivery quota bonuses and instead they are going to raise the base salaries for these delivery employees by 12.5 percent. Now Electrek is reporting most Tesla employees have been getting those bonuses every quarter for the past two years and therefore this would result in a reduction in total compensation for those employees. But look, ultimately this will come down to personality and preference. I'm sure some employees will love a higher base salary and not having 25% of their income left up to delivery quotas that may be out of their control since they're based on broader regions and multi-store goals. We also know that Tesla is now in a place to move away from the end of quarter rush to some degree as its stock is in a very strong place paired with an impeccable balance sheet. So I personally do want Tesla and its employees to focus on quality and customer experience where it can. It's also critical to remember we have a limited amount of information. I mean, how many hours are these employees working? How skilled do they have to be? How much are they getting paid? Do they work overtime, etc. Now, for what it's worth, on some forums, I have seen former delivery reps commenting they were making around $150,000 per year, not including the stock options, and yes, they did work evenings and weekends. This $150,000 figure is most likely the high end for the very best reps. And further than that, we also don't know what the delivery quotas were, nor how much the supply chain issues would actually impact these quotas. Would the quotas be adjusted due to these supply chain factors out of the employee's control? So once again, my point, we have limited data, so just be careful making assumptions. And look at this news, the US set to spend $3 billion on processing raw materials for batteries the day after we just shared that alarming infographic. These funds will be coming from the $1 trillion infrastructure bill and among the initiatives will be processing of minerals for use in large capacity batteries and recycling those batteries as well. The latest funding will help establish and retrofit battery factories and the administration has been collaborating with Tesla, GM, and Ford, but the funds will not go toward developing new domestic mines to produce lithium, nickel, cobalt, and other high demand minerals needed to make those batteries. Why? They say these resources are about the battery supply chain, which includes producing and recycling critical minerals without new extraction or mining. Now, this is great in theory, but in my opinion, they're just 
aren't enough battery packs and battery cells to be recycled to fulfill all of this new demand. So we need more mining at this stage. We get some more information on how much it will cost to have the Ford F-150 serve as backup power for your home. First, you will need the Charge Station Pro. If you're buying the standard range battery pack, it will be an additional $1,310. However, if you're buying the extended range pack, then it will come included. Additionally, customers will need the home integration system, which will run $3,895, including an inverter, a disconnect switch, and a battery pack unspecified to allow certain functionality. And lastly, you will have the installation cost, which will depend on the customer's home setup, on average, they're saying around $2,000 for the installation, meaning the full system cost if you buy the extended pack will be around $6,000, and thus around $7,500 for those buying the standard range version. Here we have some good news for Rivian, scoring around $1.5 billion in incentives to build a new factory in Georgia after it was met with a ton of backlash from local residents. Rivian will get $476 million in statutory tax credits if it fulfills its promise to create a total of 7,500 jobs by the end of 2028. Georgia is also putting in another $288 million in discretionary spending in the form of site preparation and job training programs. And the last part will be tax abatements or just reducing the property tax Rivian will have to pay from the four counties hosting the plant that make up the rest of the package, around $700 million over 25 years. And don't forget the other side as the counties will still reap around $330 million in tax revenue from Rivian versus the $2 million they would get if the project didn't happen. Here we have Stellantis spending $2.8 billion on EV focus assembly plants and R&D centers in Canada. Interesting because we know that Elon and the Tesla gang basically laugh at having R&D centers as Tesla basically builds its R&D into its manufacturing and production. Stellantis said two existing plants will be converted to be flexible multi-energy vehicle assembly facilities ready to produce the electric vehicles of the future. Sadly, they are including hybrids as well. I have to admit though, I do really like this angle. They said in addition to R&D, these centers will provide major opportunities for local talent, universities, colleges, and startups to participate in the development of Ontario's EV ecosystem. This is great. And lastly, this kind of went overlooked yesterday, but I think this is a huge deal as over the weekend, California was nearly 100% powered by renewable energy. A spokeswoman for the California Independent System Operator said, we reached 99.87% of load served by all renewables, breaking the previous record. Solar power provided two thirds of the amount needed. And she said, California has shown that for one brief and shining moment, we could do it. It's time to move to 100% clean energy 100% of the time. And on that note, that'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.